Welcome everyone to Seoul Peach Day, the third session of live CES Seoul. This is the first day of Seoul Peach Day and tomorrow at the same time we will have the second day. This whole program is sponsored by Seoul City and co-hosted by Seoul Digital Foundation and Plug and Play. My name is Giselle, I'm the MC for the session and I have David Kim from Plug and Play with me. Hello David! Hi Giselle, how are you? I'm doing good. How How's it going? Good, good. Um, <laughs> Will you please say hello to our viewers? Sure, of course. Hi everyone, I'm David Kim from Plug and Play. I'm the director of Silicon Valley Corporate Partnership. So excited to be here at all. And thanks for having me here, Giselle. <laughs> My pleasure. But isn't it so sad that we can actually physically be in um, Las Vegas for CES, that we have to see everyone in person? Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, I hope to see everyone in, in Vegas next year when the COVID situation cools down. That's right. That we are so sad that we can't meet everyone in person. All right. So we are still thankful for this global gathering, CES 2021. And even though all the events are happening online, which is very different from the past, I'm pretty sure audience around the world are already actively engaging in CES events through online exhibits. So David, at this session, the Seoul Pitch Day 1, we are here to introduce the most innovative companies in Smart City of Seoul along with its products and solutions. And I'm sure you must be so excited. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely excited for this. Mm -hmm. So David, I was in Las Vegas and what were you doing last year around this time? So, um, we as Plug and Play uh -huh. uh, also was there for the very first time mm -hmm. to showcase the number of our portfolio company. Uh -huh. I see. Well, for me, because I was there in Las Vegas, it was so amazing to see the promotion of Seoul's exhibit with its 20 innovative companies. And since it was very first time for Seoul to be in CES, the Global VC and other audience were so impressed with each company's technologies, products, solutions, and services and I got to see that live last year so I was very honored to be together with them and this is a reason why I'm super excited today because we get to see even more innovative companies from Seoul Wow I feel like we have a great support from around the world and by the way David I think you have to tell us about your company and what kind of connection that global um, VC and PMP has with Seoul so far Yes, sure. So um, before I give everyone an overview of our company, mm -hmm. um, let me briefly talk about how we began our relationship with Seoul City. So in 2019, our CEO, Said Amidi, um, met the previous mayor of Seoul and uh, for the very first time at his office in Seoul. Mm -hmm. And since then, um, Said invited the mayor to his um, office in Silicon Valley. And in 2020, January, mm -hmm. um, both Seoul City and Plug and Play co-hosted this event called Smart Korea 2020. Oh. And on the very same day, both Plug and Play and Seoul City formed the MOU to uh -huh. jointly evaluate the potential opening, um, to potentially open uh, the innovation platform mm -hmm. in Seoul, South Korea. And now I strongly feel that it's time to launch our office in Seoul. Mm -hmm. And we are very much looking forward to working more closely with the Seoul city. Uh -huh. So um, now I wanted to take a few minutes to walk you through the high level overview of Plug and Play platform and our new initiative for Plug and Play Career Office. Please. All right. So we are the largest open innovation platform built on a very strong ecosystem of innovator. Our ecosystem consists of over 20,000 startups, 400 major corporations, and about 180 venture capital firms. We also engage with a top tier university, a large network of very experienced mentor, foundation, as well as governments on our platform. So these are the three main pillars at Plug and Play. So first and foremost, we are the venture capital firm. This is the core of our business, and we are the most active investor in Silicon Valley, investing in about 200 startups every year. Second, we run about uh, 50 plus accelerator programs every year uh, in 30 different cities and 15 countries around the world. 
And lastly, we run the Corporate Open Innovation Platform. We currently work with over 400 corporations worldwide in any given industry to help fear their external innovation challenges. So our history dating back to early 90s where our founder and CEO, Said Amidi, was able to house, invest, and accelerate companies such as Google, Logitech, and PayPal. So this early beginning has propelled us into the present days where we are now so proud of having over a thousand portfolio companies. Some of the companies include PayPal, Dropbox, Lending Club, N26, or Honey. So uh, pretty much these are the companies that has a valuation over a billion dollar, uh, which we call it um, the unicorn startups. So we currently run 18 industry specific program where we source and accelerate 15 to 20 startups in each of these programs in every six months. And just last year, we accelerated about 1,000 startups in 37 different offices. So uh, we are also running the largest open innovation platform in the world. We currently collaborate with Fortune 500 companies worldwide, including Walmart, Microsoft, Dimer, and many more. And lastly, as you see on this chart, Plug and Play has built a very um, strong global presence in 37 offices worldwide. And we just launched 18 new programs in 2019. So we are growing, so we are growing really, really fast. So we have this large network of corporations, startups, and VC around the world. And we are very excited to connect them to Plug and Play Career Office. So these are the snapshot of the plug and play career office. So we are um, planning on launching the office in the, uh, spring 2021, and we'll be focusing on uh, two different categories. First is smart city, and the second one is financial services, such as FinTech and InsureTech. So here are the subcategories of each of these focus area. Smart city, for instance, include like urban mobility, IoT, energy, real estate and construction, and for financial services, uh, we'll focus on like new payment system, a customer engagement, new types of underwriting, and um, auto insurance. So here's our mission. We want Plug and Play Korea to be the largest innovation platform. In order to do so, we will make the Korea the market entry hub for international startups um, by bringing startups from all around the world. Second, is to make it the global gateway for Korean startups to 37 uh, plug and play global offices. Um, actually, when after our CEO visited Korea for the very first time in November of 2019, we have seen the tremendous growth opportunity uh, within Korean startups. So we'll also accelerate and invest the best Korean startup. And lastly, we also have seen uh, a lot of you know, corporations paying attention to their um, internal and external innovation, um, internal and external innovation. So we'll also support and strengthen their innovation strategies through plug and play open innovation platform. So here's how our accelerator programs will be look like for a plug and play career. So instead of running on industry agnostic accelerator program, we will essentially run the industry specific program where both plug and play and let's say Seoul City and other uh, corporate partners of us will collectively detect the focus uh, of the program, filter the applications that we receive, and then select the startups that will make it into our three months accelerator program. So we'll be sourcing up to 500 startups and the top 15 startups will be selected to go through our accelerator program. These selected startups will definitely have an opportunity to engage with uh, the local government and the corporation, as well as the global VC and the global um, corporations that we have around the world. So in terms of selecting the startups, we're not only sourced uh, the local Korean startups, but the startups from around the world at any given stage from C stage all the way to series A or above. And here's um, what's, what's gonna be look like. So this is an example of our plug and play Japan's accelerator program. 
And as you see that the 40% of the startups that got into the plug and play Japan's accelerator program were non-Japanese startups. And the more than half of these startups were series A or above. We plan to replicate this for a plug and play career office to, to truly give an opportunity for startups in any given stage and also bring in um, international startups to Korea for the, um, for the market opportunity. So this is all the presentation that I have for today. I hope you enjoy learning more about plug and play platform and our initiative for Korea office. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, David. I know the reason why you're here with me today. <laughs> yes. So um, I love to uh, present plug and play. Mm -hmm. And since so, and since I strongly believe that Seoul City and plug and play um, has a lot of collaboration points, mm -hmm. since Seoul City would love to, you know, support and accelerate their local Korean startups globally. And I strongly believe that plug and play, um, we could definitely help them. Uh, through uh, their own startup journey. And at the same time, I, I also realized that there are a lot of um, international startups out there. Mm -hmm. And um, if plug and play can, could work as a funnel for international startups to um, do their business in Korea, mm -hmm. I think that will also uh, make a huge impact, yeah. not only to plug and play, but also to Seoul City and, um, and Korea as a country. Yeah, to strengthen to both, to each other. Please keep up the good work. Thank you. I'll, I'll work <laughs> as hard as I can. <laughs> All right, David, it's time to move on. And what if I told you we have some people as guests today that would interest all of you watching as well as anyone who's interested in starting a business? Ladies and gentlemen, we have special guests giving us a special presentation today. David? All right, so our first speaker is one of your judges, um, Shunpei Kobayashi from Plug and Play Japan. And he will talk to us about million dollar tips for startups. Please stay tuned. Hi, David. Um, thank you for that introduction. And hi, everyone. Um, thank you very much for having me here. My name is Shunpei, and I am a Ventures Associate for Plug and Play Japan's Mobility and Smart Cities program. Um, this means that I am responsible for finding great startups to participate in our innovation program and also for finding investment opportunities uh, worldwide. Um, today, I wanted to spend about 10 minutes or so um, to introduce plug and plays activities in Japan and also provide uh, some tips that might help you to, um, for those that are looking to enter the global market. <clears throat> so that is me. And before we dive right in, um, here are some numbers that I wanted to show you. Um, to describe the current state of Japanese startup ecosystem. Um, as you can see here, post the financial crisis in 2008, investments in domestic startups have increased steadily, both in terms of amount raised and also deal count. In addition, the number of par partnerships with startups has increased as well over the last couple of years. And these include partnerships between a private company and another private company, and also partnerships between private company and also a public company as well. Um, so overall, the ecosystem in Japan is growing quite rapidly, and we would like to think that Plug and Play Japan has played a part in that growth. So here is Plug and Play Japan's mission. It is to empower and connect innovators to, cre to create an inspiring future from Japan. We currently have three offices. The T Tokyo office opened in 2017, the Kyoto office opened in 2019, and the Osaka office opened in July 2020. And just like our headquarter office in Silicon Valley, we have three main key business domains. Our industry-themed innovation programs, corporate innovation support, and investments. And in terms of the, the programs in Japan, we currently have seven different verticals. We have IoT, FinTech, InsureTech, Mobility, Brand and Retail in Tokyo, Hard Tech and Health in Kyoto, and Smart Cities in Osaka. We also plan to officially launch more verticals, including new material and energy in the near future. 
And just as I mentioned, the newest addition to our locations in Japan is the Osaka office that just opened in July、um, 2020. And we run the Smart Cities program there. And even with the、um, COVID 19 environment, many of the companies that are listed here have entrusted plug and play to join our Smart Cities platform to fulfill their innovation needs. So now, Across all of the three locations that we have in Japan, we have 40 corporate partners across various industries who are actively looking to collaborate with international and domestic startups.、Um, just a little bit about our demo day. The most recent one was back in September last year.、Um, and although we used to have these demo days in person in the past, Um, this has all shifted online due to COVID 19.、Um, however, as you can see here, our online events are quite successful.、Um, for this particular event, we had 161 startups pitch to more than 4,000 viewers over the span of six days. These are just a few of the many collaborations that came out of our past programs. So, Edge Tensor, a Texas based startup offering scalable AI for edge devices, collaborated with Fujikura,、uh, which is an electrical equipment manufacturing company. Advice Robo, a Netherlands based startup offering behavioral credit scoring, scoring collaborated with Oryx Credit. And Vimo, an India based startup that helps automate en enterprise sales, collaborated with Sompo. Which is a major insurance company in Japan. In terms of investments,、um, there are three ways that this can happen. One is a potential investment from plug and play, the second is investments from, from our corporate partners, and the third is investments from other VCs that we、um, connect you guys with through our program.、Um, for the three companies that are listed here, Space Engine was a company that Plug and Play invested,、um, and Mira Robotics and Near Me were invested in by some of our corporate partners.、Um, so, hopefully, I was able to explain a little bit about the overview of Plug and Play's activities in Japan and the different ways that startups are able to benefit from the program and our investment activities here. Um, but today, I also wanted to take a few moments to discuss some of the tips、um, for those that are looking to enter the global market as well. And I would say that there are no easy shortcuts. It does take a lot of hard work and determination. But one thing I can definitely say is that it is always wise to seek help or partner with those that are familiar with the local ecosystem,、um, whether it be plug and play or any other organization that supports startups. Um, our program is designed to be corporate sponsored. So it's pretty much a free business development platform for the startups、um, if you pass the selection process. And you get to meet large corporations that are ser serious about working with great startups. The second tip I would give、um, to a startup looking to enter the Japanese market would be to expect the cultural and language barriers to be there.、Um, in many ways, Korean and Japanese business cultures are very similar. Um, so, um, this might not be a, as big of an issue for the audience today. But what I always tell the international startups that are participating in our program is that usually the purpose of the first meeting is to get to the second meeting, and the purpose of the second meeting is to get to the third meeting. So,、um, it does usually take some time and patience. The third tip I would give to startups looking to collaborate with large corporates is to do、um, due diligence and research and to find out about what these companies actually do.、Um, many of the times we just think of their logos and when we are working with large, large corporates, but it's critical to find the right point of contact within the right department、um, out of the many groups that these companies have within their very complex organization. Um, just to add some color about our program、um, breakdown, we usually select about 100, over 100 startups per batch for each of our programs, and about half of them are international startups. 
So we mainly do two things. We help domestic companies um, grow, and we also help international companies come into the Japanese market as well. Um, so we don't have enough time today to discuss all of the ins and outs of going global, but I would be happy to connect offline with any of you that are interested in finding out more about plug and play or more about the Japanese market in general. Um, thank you very much for listening, and I hope to connect with you, uh, with many of you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Shunpei, for your wonderful talk on million dollar, dollar tips for a startup. So from his talk, David, I have a quick question. Do you think the investment is the most important thing for development of startups? Um, well, um, investment, of course, is critical. Uh, but likewise, as Shunpei mentioned, it's mm -hmm. also very important to present the opportunity to demonstrate the POC ah. that, uh, that can incorporate startups cutting edge technology into a business. And I was actually very impressed. I mean, we, I know that plug and play has been done such a great job in terms of connecting, uh, right startups to mm -hmm. the corporation. Mm -hmm. But, um, it was very, I was very impressed to see how plug how much plug and play japan office was able to produce a lot of poc opportunity for startups mm -hmm. and i strongly believe that that's going to be a key for startups mm -hmm. since um from startups point of view um getting the right clients mm -hmm. um uh, the fact they're able to demonstrate their products uh with the right one is also very very important um as well as getting the investment mm -hmm. well then i guess pmp korea has a work to do yeah, we definitely have a lot of work to do. As Shunpei mentioned, yeah. we're not only looking forward to um, support local Korean startup, but also bringing startups from, from all around the world uh -huh. to Korea for the business opportunity. So, I mean, I, I strongly believe I have a lot of work to do, yeah. Shunpei, you gotta tell him what to do, okay? <laughs> Keep your <laughs> eyes on him <laughs> or PMP Korea. All right. So thank you, Shunpei, and we'll see you in a minute. Thank you so much again. Okay, David, I guess right. we have another special presentation by someone. Will you introduce us? Right, so um, next uh, we'll hear from Blue Space, um, a company that has um, succeeded as autonomous uh, driving software uh, that are based in Silicon Valley. So I heard that the founder of company, is she? She? Yes, female. She is yes. Korean, right? And yes. that's why she's interested um, in the in Korean market, I heard. Yes. Um, so j just wanted to give you a bit of background from uh, Blue Space. Okay, please. Uh, so uh, the company is founded by, as, as you mentioned, a Korean founder whose name is Christy Moon. Okay. Um, in Silicon Valley with his colleague, Joe. Oh, and um, it's actually one of the plug and place portfolio company. And ah. they, they already receive a lot of traction from mm -hmm. uh, corporation as well as investors mm -hmm. um, worldwide. But um, since Christine is um, a Korean heritage, yeah. um, she was very much looking forward mm -hmm. to um, getting to the Korean market. And I'm very, uh, very excited to um, hear more about our own story throughout okay. the presentation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited too, actually. Um, please welcome Kristen. Hello there. Hi, can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you. Great. Well, thanks for this opportunity to share uh, about myself uh, and also about Blue Space. Should I start my presentation now? Please go ahead. Well, first of all, thanks to um, Plug and Play and also to the Soul City for arranging this great opportunity. Um, the name of the company that I was able to co-found with Joel, as David mentioned, is Blue Space. We're based out of Santa Clara, California, and we build self-driving technology, especially our perception. We call it perception without compromise. Um, I was very excited about this opportunity to speak for two reasons. One, um, I'm from Seoul. So I, growing up, I split my time between South Korea and the US. So 
So I, I love the title, Connected Soul. Uh, so I was uh, excited about that. And secondly, I was excited because, as David mentioned, we are one of Plug and Play's portfolio company. And I must say, uh, they have been along, you know, with us throughout the journey, whether it's David, uh, the rest of the team, Janice, Tarek, and Fan, they've been very supportive. And I wanted to share that experience of being an entrepreneur. And uh, it's definitely a journey that uh, involves many folks. So I'll start with um, my background and what our technology is about and uh, also what, what are we trying to solve here uh, and, and then I'll end with some personal thoughts. So I'm president and co-founder of Blue Space. Um, I started my career in Silicon Valley when I joined Google in 2004. I was there for about nine years. I was on the Android team. And, and then I moved on to cloud services company like Dropbox and uh, genomics company like Color Genomics, and then at Drive AI. Drive AI was founded out of uh, Stanford AI Lab. They were one of the first to apply deep learning to self-driving technology. And when the company was acquired by Apple, uh, I was able to um, pause and think about, hmm, what can we do here? So my co-founder and I decided to uh, start Blue Space because we felt that we had a uh, hidden, um, I guess, advantage or unfair advantage as Peter Thiel, one of the famous investors, uh, investor in Silicon Valley and also entrepreneur himself. He was one of the co-founders of PayPal and also Palantir uh, said, uh, start a company when you have a secret. And I think that secret wasn't born out of nothing. It came from all the experiences we've had to date. So um, I'll start with, um, we raised 3.5 million last year um, and we were successful in getting a lot of traction in the market in Silicon Valley as well as overseas. And this is where I think Connected Soul makes a lot of sense. There is talent everywhere. There is a global market. And I believe that Korea is actually one of the more exciting places as we think about the future of autonomous vehicles, robotics uh, going forward and smart cities. Um, so while Shunpei said he gave a million dollar uh, tip, I, I guess my tip is free. I'm going to share our experience. <laughs> um, so I think you're able to do something special. I have that insight when you can work as a team. So our team came together uh, from all walks, different walks, folks who started other companies like Voyage and Drive AI, and folks who are at other uh, automotive companies like GM, Nissan, JLR, and folks like me who've been in general tech. And I think when you come together as a team collectively, you can definitely um, uh, tackle some of the more challenging uh, problems that we face today. So first of all, your TAM as an entrepreneur, total addressable market has to be big. So the global autonomous vehicle market is very big, $550 billion by 2026. But how do we get to commercialization and what role can we play in aiding that? So um, Blue Space um, patented our technology, which is um, solving this problem in front of us. Um, if you were to break down the sort of the um, software brain of the car, which is the AV, autonomous vehicle technology, it's three key components. Perception, how does a computer view the world? And prediction, how does it predict the motion of the objects in the world? And then finally, doing its own motion planning. And what you see in this black box is what we would call the black box dilemma. Um, while deep learning is a very useful tool, it's also something that um, takes a lot of effort collecting data and uh, deploying capital and a lot of time needed to perfect that tool. So what Blue Space is trying to do is realizing that the industry has done many things like driving millions of miles to collect data, trying to infer intention of the motion of the objects in the, in the world. And then we're going painfully slow or slamming on brakes uh, or using other methods. We realized Blue Space has something that we can do to move the industry forward. So I'll just share a little bit about our secret sauce because you need that secret sauce to be able to survive. And like David said, to gain traction in the market. 
So um, I'm going to nerd out a little bit. Uh, what you see on the left is how currently it's done by many companies in the space, which is you, you look at a scenario. What you see here is an intersection. And then you'll see the static object, which are the buildings. So think about this as um, any major intersections in the heart of Seoul. And you see pedestrians crossing the street. You see cars. And in the past, it would take many takes to really be able to understand, perceive the world and understand the motion of the objects in the world. Uh, what Blue Space has is ability to instantaneously measure the direction and the speed in which all these objects are traveling at. So you can imagine how that milliseconds of life and death situation can be safely navigated with our perception tool. So this is our secret, and this is what's been patented. And um, to give you some, for the technical audience, what we have is what we call six DOF. DOF stands for six degrees of freedom. It means we can tell all motions possible, rotational, radial, and, and latitude. Whereas others can only do latitude uh, or radial at best. And that allows us to apply our technology in urban setting like Seoul, or maybe suburban like this, most of Silicon Valley and highway scenarios. And that means back to TAM, total addressable market, our uh, market's pretty big. And that means we can go to new neighborhoods like this and be able to understand the world. Um, and that's, um, and that ends up in better performance with uh, cost-saving measures to really have blue space be the key advantage that will enable the, um, the industry. So um, that means we can work with anyone in the ecosystem. So that could be Hyundai, that could be um, BMW, Toyota, Cruise, and others in the, in the space. Uh, so people say when there's a gold rush, being able to sell just a shovel alone can be a great business. And I guess what we're ha saying is that we're not only a shovel, it's actually a key enabler for everyone to tap into that $550 billion market. Um, so you can imagine the total addressable market and the application of our technology is rather broad. It means on and off-road mobile robotics. So you can imagine um, robots like this, delivery robots, or agricultural application, mining, so there could be um, smart infrastructure, smart mobility uh, space that we could really think about um, how we can partner up. Um, I also want to share with you that um, autonomous vehicle technology will be adopted in the enterprise side. So the way we've been engaging with major cities like Seoul or some of the smart cities like Songdo in South Korea or Sejong is in the mass transit space. Um, and that is solving for something that many of us face, uh, whether it's in the heart of New York or in Silicon Valley on Highway 101, it's this, it's a geometry problem. So while autonomy is a useful tool, you also have to uh, take into account the infrastructure that's currently deployed. And this is where sometimes as an entrepreneur, um, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail to you. And I think this is important to seek market feedback. And this is where um, talking to many um, key stakeholders in your ecosystem is quite important. And a little shout out to the Plug and Play's global network, whether it's a team sitting in Thailand or David and team in South Korea or here in Silicon Valley or the team in Michigan. Um, they have really helped us to connect with their corporate partners in the space to understand how could our tool be useful. Um, so the key takeaway here is that, um, you know, there are many applications, but this can't be something that you dream up in a vacuum. You have to talk to as many people as possible. I think some folks call this product market fit and having another uh, lingo, MVP, um, minimally viable product out there sooner than later. And you constantly iterate because uh, the market's changing. It's quite dynamic. And when you have these inputs and being able to iterate on that allows you to survive and thrive as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur. And, and this allowed us to really branch out beyond what our team, a small but mighty team can handle through our network of investors and corporate partners. And this truly makes uh, South Korea uh, our, one of our key markets that we want to be in sooner than later. I think 2021, the Korean government has earmarked a billion dollars towards autonomous vehicle. And I think Blue Space wants to take part in that as a key enabler for the existing players that's in the market so we can partner. Um, my closing thoughts are um, sort of 
I guess, Robert Frost, the road not taken. Um, I think when you walk down, it's not actually a fork on the road. I think entrepreneurship is this tiny road on the right where it may not be paved. Uh, it may look scary. And I think doing it alone is too much. And that's where uh, a lot of folks advise that you have a co-founder. And my co-founder is great. I can count on them. We're in the trenches together, but it's not just us. It's the team. And um, a lot of investors and your network can help you really uh, grow the team and grow the market. And I think it's events like this that helps us to connect with each other that will help you uh, get your name out there and get in front of investors. So I end with this um, my email. So I, I'd be happy to connect with other entrepreneurs and, uh, and those who are in the market to either partner or to share our stories, compare notes. Uh, and I guess I want to end with the gratitude. 2020 was a tough year, but 2021 will be a lot more exciting with um, walking the journey together. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Christine, for, um, for joining us today and sharing such a great insight uh, regarding uh, the market expansion for the domestic startups and your plan for uh, um, uh, Seoul uh, Korea launch. So um, I remember meeting Christine for the very first time in 2019 when uh, she had a, a bit of presentation about herself and how she uh, got into uh, Blue Space. Um, and I was very amazed uh, by her that although she was working at Google, and, and Google, as you guys know, is like one of the stable yeah, job out there. Definitely. Yeah, she pretty much got out of her uh, safety net ah. to join a startup called Drive AI. And I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of challenges that she has to go through. And as a mother of, is it three kids, right? Christine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> three kids yeah. puppy. Yeah. As a mother of three kids um, and puppies, um, that must be really difficult for her mm -hmm. to even uh, maintain a work-life balance. Yeah. Um, but I was very glad to hear that uh, she was able to do it really, really well. Mm -hmm. And um, it, especially I, I really like about her last slide um, where she mentioned that um, in order for startups to grow, it's mm -hmm. very important to have a strong team member. Yeah. Um, I personally think that um, the key for domestic startups to get into the uh, international market okay. is having a right team member and being hustle. So true. Um, no matter where you at, uh, no matter where you're in Korea, where, whether, no matter where you're doing a business in Korea mm -hmm. or in the U.S. or elsewhere, it's always important for you to um, present your company and have a right team member and be hustle mm -hmm. to get as many clients as possible. Because mm -hmm. you never know uh, whether um, your technology would work for, for um, company A or company B. Mm -hmm. So being hustle is very important. Having a right team member is also very important since you're not um, doing everything by yourself. And um, also right mindset and, and right mission is, is also essential. So, uh, Christine, um, once again, thank you so much for your time. And we're very much looking forward to support you and your company to do a, a successful soft launch in Seoul, South Korea. Thank you, Christine. Thanks, Thanks so much. So um, from now on, we will have each company's their presentation. And David, before we meet, meet each of them, I believe you have some people to introduce to us. Yes, I do. So um, these are the experts who will give feedbacks on the startups that are participating today and help them plan for the global expansion. Ah, sounds like they're our judges. Yes, um, absolutely. So uh, we have a representative from Plug and Play Japan, Singapore, hmm. and Silicon Valley team. Wow. From the world. Yes, from around the world. <laughs> All right, should we meet them now? Yes, absolutely. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, will you please say to hi um, to our observer, uh, Nabarun? Will you start? Uh, sure. Hello. Um, thank you so much for inviting me uh, for this uh, wonderful session. Annyeonghashimnika. Uh, Chanan Plug and Play Singapore, a venture team is Ilhan. Navarun Rago Hamnida. So I'm Navarun from the Ventures team in Singapore, um, part of uh, the Mobility, IoT, and Smart Cities Initiative. And uh, I particularly look at investments in the APAC region and uh, also working with our corporate partners in the region. 
So yeah, very glad to be here. Looking forward to the um, the Sada's pitching and very excited. Thank you. We are so honored to have you here too, Nabra. And he speaks good Korean, David. <laughs> oh yes. So um, he actually um, worked at Hyundai Mobis prior ah, to joining Plug and Play. I so see. I believe his Korean is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's our next judge? So um, Edison Honeycutt, please um, could you introduce a bit of yourself? Absolutely. Hi, David. Hi, Giselle. Thanks for having me today. To give a brief introduction, my name is Addison, and I work as an analyst on the Plug and Play Ventures team in Silicon Valley. And I focus on IoT and smart cities technologies. So really excited to hear the startups pitch today. All right. Thank you, Addison. And Shunpei, you're the last. Uh, thank you, David and Giselle. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Shunpei, and I'm a Ventures Associate for Plug and Play Japan's Mobility and Smart Cities program. I'm um, very happy to be here and look forward to hearing everyone's pitches. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Seoul. I'm pretty sure some of you might have been to Seoul before and some of you not had a chance yet, but we wish to have you all here in Seoul participate in this event next time. Okay? All right, sounds great. Well, now it's time to hear from our innovative companies. I would like to explain how it works. We have seven companies ready to give a pitch, and each company will have 10 minutes, and they'll give us a presentation for about seven minutes, ready, um, and then following by that, we will have a Q&A session as remainder of the time. David, are you ready? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, David, then let's meet our first company. The name is Bloxen. All right. Greetings, sir and ma'am. This is Jill Park from Bloxen speaking. Please let me introduce our new handout gaming console, Cloud Gear. The market we have focused on first is the global game market, which is annually growing faster and faster. In this market, Customers are clarified. Only 35% of the gamers are so-called core gamers, but the income from them gets over 80% of the global game market for total. When they, core gamers, use any handheld gaming console, it's much problematic. Quite less portability, too small pool of game titles, and even the tendency that game titles for portable console are strongly casual game biased. Moreover, gamers do not have many alternates. Performance laptops are too expensive, and the performance is not quite well, and the storage for games are too small. One of the, one of the arising solution in this harsh time would be streaming, also known as remote play. As we all you can see, global companies such as NVIDIA, Google, Valve, Apple, and many others try to offer game streaming service to overcome such problems we just talked about. But precedent services sometimes, or quite often, cannot give an affluent streaming experience through. It's because so-called input lag and requires too much usage fee. That's why hereby we offer our novel handheld console, Cloud Gear, streaming friendly and optimized for gaming outside. Cloud Gear's components are much cost efficient, but usability is much more than that. Well, Cloud Gear can stream AAA class games such as Tekken 7, even in crowded Seoul Metro via only LTE hotspot tether channel. Plus, unlike other two chip ones, Cloud Gear users may get connected and play such streamed game and even retro class games quite well and easy to set up. We have found a targetable area in the market with several YouTubers we could already make a partnership. Another good news for this, for this is we have been elected to be one of the participants of CES 2021 as a startup in Seoul, Korea, and made a successful crowdfund campaign for the first time. The fund campaign in Wadi's Korea is, is finished over $30,000 
and being based here on, will improve our system as P2P game rental platform as well, in the long term, of course. In summary, we shall catch at least 0.1% of the worldwide total share of the handheld gaming console in the gaming market. The man who do all of these is the team Bloxen, a tech-based startup by ambitious young man, two men in front of you. That's all for now. If you have anything to ask, please feel freely. Thank you for your listening. Thank you, Bloxet. It was a great presentation. And David, what did you think about that? Oh, I mean, it's absolutely an amazing company. And I think, um, I personally think that um, the market opportunity um, in the gaming industry is skyrocketing every year. So I, I surely believe that um, he could do a lot well uh, if he's able to market it right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Thanks for your comments as well. I think it will be valuable for them. All right, now we want to have a Q&A session. Our judges, please go ahead. Um, I can start. Um, thank you very much for that wonderful pitch. Um, wanted to ask you more about the technology behind what you guys do. Um, what, what's the magic and what allows you guys to achieve this uh, fluent streaming? Well, basically, we have ported the Linux OS in lightweight and by ourselves. Well, such as uh, general purpose OS, such as mobile OS, so-called Android, or any others, have very many, many dependency in software area. So they have to consume many LTE network channels, bandwidth, and any other system, system resources. But ours are not. Thank you. Um, as a follow-up question, could you also speak a little bit about your competitive advantage um, against other um, companies that do similar things as you guys? Well, for the, for the rep representative competitors, there is Nintendo Switch, as you already can see. The Nintendo Switch has, beca has become a representative handheld console in global area. But Nintendo, Nintendo Switch's cost is very expensive, and its its performance its performance area, the offering game titles are very narrow in the narrow sessions. The, the, as a first party, only Nintendo can offer the competitive game titles. The third parties can cannot serve such game such game titles in the market but our system is based on the game streaming so if you can play the game in pc or any or playstation or such as the competitive platform itself then you can play the game by streaming in our cloud gear so uh, the cl the cloud gear can have the the most the most wide uh, the widest area in the gaming Got it. Thank you. Does anyone uh, else? Maybe I can, maybe I can take over from there. So um, I believe that uh, games that are available on Steam, such as let's say Dota or um, Counter Strike, um, can these also be targeted? Because um, these are some of the major games, uh, at least within Southeast Asia. Mm. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Uh, so um, I was mentioning about the games that are generally available on, let's say, a platform like Steam. So, yes. for example, Dota or um, Counter-Strike. So are these games also available to be played on the console? Um, that's one question. Second question is that um, if you're talking about pricing in relation to something like Switch, then um, how sensitive is the pricing to um, a market such as the Philippines or Indonesia? Well, basically, the precedent, the precedent handheld consoles cannot play the streaming in outside. So the remote play, the optimized remote play, is currently what we can what we can give for the customers by our our major competitiveness. And well, the letter, the let the question, the letter you give is um, not quite not, not quite understandable. Right, so um, 
it was more about the pricing strategy. So uh, considering the markets in Southeast Asia, for example, the Philippines and Indonesia are very price sensitive. So is your marketing, uh, is your pricing strategy going to change depending on these markets? Because these are two of the largest gaming markets in Southeast Asia. Well, our main target is Korea, Japan, and North America. So the, pr um, our, the targeted price of our cloud gear is to over $200. So the Southeast, Southeast Asia is not our concern. Got All it. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, let's move on to our next company. It's called Blueprint Lab. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Hi, I'm Charlie, CEO of Blueprint Lab. We are providing product recommendation algorithm and virtual try on solution with facial recognition and AI technology. When you visit iOS store, there are so many glasses at the store so that you don't know which glasses fit on your face. Also, I wear stores perspective, they don't know which glasses picked by their customers. They should prepare all the products at the, their store for the reasons. Due to COVID-19 pandemic situation, people are getting pro, uh, purchased product online rather than offline. However, they do not have, get enough information online shopping platform page to make a purchase decision. So in order to these solve problems, We've developed a virtual try-on solution by using TrueDepth's camera of Apple devices. It's more accurate and faster than any other solutions. Let me play a short video clip that tells how the solution works. Just to put your face into the circle, then AI algorithm automatically scan your face. After that, AI recommends eyewear that fits on your face based on your face data such as shape of the face, width of your face, and location of eyes, nose. Let's take a look at market size of eyewear industry. It's $168.7 billion for a global market, but Korean market is $1.5 billion, only 1% 1 of whole eyewear market. So we are focusing on US and European market from the first stage of our business. We have to combine the business model. One is license model when we do 3D rendering of eyewear, and the other is subscription model. We charge $100 for 3D rendering work for each eyewear frame, and $150 a month for using the solution. For example, if you have one eyewear model and one store, you have to pay $250 for the first month, and $150 after second month. Yes, we have three competitors here, Lounge in Korea, Dero in the US, Feeding Bus in France. Most of our competitors are only using 2D image data. On the other hand, Blueprint Lab is not only using 2D image data, but also 3D mesh data. So we are providing size-based accurate function and full 3D real-time virtual try-on service that others cannot provide. Now we have customers have sunglasses, Blink in Korea, McLaren, the British book maker, Lamy, which is French fashion brand, Hyphen from Texas, and Mask from California in the US. We are not eyewear company. We are providing solutions and services using facial recognition and AI technology to our customers. So we have planned to expand our business to beauty, plastic surgery, and bio-authentication industry with outstanding technology we've been developing. We have many and wide global network all, the, all over the world, Asia, US, even Europe. We've tried to penetrate global markets so far as taking accelerating program like a plug and play in the Silicon Valley, ERA in New York. We got seed investment last year from Hanyang Uni University Holdings and Xinan Finance Group. Now we are 13, six developer 
including me, four designers, three business people. All members have knowledge and experience in their area of expertise and qualified for the, our business. Now, we are looking for $1 million funding to improve our technology and hire qualified people and marketing and sales to penetrate global market. And also, we are looking for partners, eyewear companies, local retailers, and also online retailers. We offer the most effective way to open a whole new world in vision. Thank you. Thank you, Blueprint Lab. That was a great presentation. And I wish I could have that service, David. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I wish I could have that service too, yeah. Isn't it? Because you're wearing glasses. <laughs> and actually, uh, one of the retail shops that um, he works with, uh -huh. um, I'm a, a bit customer ah. to that website. Ooh -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, David, tell us about, I mean, what do you think of this presentation then? Uh, first of all, um, thank you so much for the presentation. I personally believe that the demand for online shopping has increased significantly, especially due to the COVID situation. That's right. And uh, facial recognition and AI technology are the key mm -hmm. to enhance the customer engagement. Yeah. And one thing that I like about the uh, Blueprint Lab mm -hmm. is that your technology is widely used not only in like um, I wear glasses retail store, True. but also to like beauty store mm -hmm. or even let's say like luxury goods. Yeah. So if you're able to market it right, I, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of um, market opportunity, especially in 2021. So true. All right, let's have a Q and A session. Anybody has a question? I can get us started. First, thank you for such an interesting presentation. I'm curious a little bit about your expansion strategy. When you're adding a new store or a new business, how difficult is it to add each new pair of glasses? And do they use the same ones that you've already worked with or are you adding new glasses for each store? Uh, you mean three rendering work for the eyewear frame? Yes. Okay, uh, if you have a, a eyewear, uh, eyewear frame work, uh, if you do use the, uh, for the, to use our solution, uh, it's just uh, using our solution. But if we don't have uh, the eyewear frame model, 3D model, you want to use uh, for the solution, we have to do uh, 3D rendering work for uh, your business. So uh, for the 3D rendering work, uh, we charge uh, $100 for uh, each glasses frame. But uh, uh, if you have, uh, there are uh, many glasses and have, uh, having uh, various uh, color variation, uh, we can uh, provide, uh, we can offer the price of, uh, for the color variation. Was that enough to answer your yes. question? Yes, no, that perfectly answered. Maybe one follow-up from me is, okay. is it very common for new stores to need 3D rendering or do they have the same brands as the last store did, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, now, we also have a plan to expand our business, like uh, IP business. Uh, if we, let's say we have a, uh, we are collaborating with a big company like Luxottica. Uh, in, in the case, we can make an uh, eyewear frame database. Then we can just uh, provide our solution, not, not uh, including the pricing policy for the 3D rendering work. We can just uh, provide our solution and you can just uh, pay subscri subscription model $100 per each uh, uh, month. All right, since it's a live CES, we don't have much time. I think we can have one other last question. Anybody? Um, I have a question. Um, so if you had to choose one over the other, your solution, is it adding value to the customer or is it cutting cost for the customer? Um, so I guess the, the main, the core of my question is, um, what is the number one reason that your customer would choose to implement your solution? Uh, we think uh, both we can uh, provide a saving cost for the, the local eyewear stores. And also uh, we can provide our solution to improve their revenue or number of users' uh, 
visiting users. Uh, for example, we are providing our solution to mask in the US uh, for the its uh, solution to for local uh, eyewear uh, optometrists. Uh, it's a kind of a saving cost for their business. All right. Was it enough? <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's, that was very good. Thank you. All right. It's time for us to move on. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, David. Do you know who's our next speaker? Yes. Um, so, um, next we have Internet. Internet? Yes. You sure we have Internet? Yes, we sure we do. <laughs> I think we do have a Bro9 at bro this time. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's, it's my bad. Yes, we have Bro9. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bro9. Thank you. Hi, I'm Yunbi Lee, a pro at Bro9, which develops Volca technology. Thank you very much for your interest in Volca technology, which enables you to charge any electronic device regardless of its voltage and current. Bro9 revolutionizes the most underdeveloped area of traditional manufacturing, value chain. You must be familiar with this kind of situation. You always need to find which one is the proper charger or adapter for your phone, camera, or TV. You cannot just throw it away because we even don't know when to use it. Different kinds of adapters and chargers are difficult to carry around in daily lives, but also hard to find right away. But we have so many kinds of electronic devices to use and charge in our lives, and therefore, we are wasting a lot of time charging our batteries. Can it be more convenient? How convenient would it be if we could charge electronic devices with a single charger? In general, when a company develops a new electronic device, the amount of voltage and current is set up for each device. So the company produces new adapters or chargers that flow on appropriate voltage and current. However, these electronic devices, adapters, and chargers are dumped to our planet based on its product life cycle. Four billion dollars worth of new adapters and chargers are produced every year. If they remain unsold, inventory will increase and become a dead stock. Besides, these various kinds of electronic devices must receive a certification to be produced and distributed to each country. But if you can just charge all these electronic devices with only one charger, wouldn't it be much happier to both consumers and manufacturers? Our products are not just limited to convenience. We also care about our planet. As I said earlier, 80% of more than 4 billion chargers are incinerated and buried every year, and only 20% are recycled. Since the amount of waste exceeds the acceptable volume of global waste, international associations and governments started to establish a worldwide regulations for e-waste. For example, European Union urged to prohibit Apple from using a single adapter to its electronic devices in February 2020. However, Apple cannot integrate different kinds of adapters immediately, so it provides consumers with a mobile phone package without a charger in its latest version. Although Apple's reactive reaction was not the best solution, but at least it saved 347 tons of e-waste every year by not producing chargers. And global companies are rushed to join the move to reduce CO2. Bro9 aims to solve environmental pollution by allowing consumers to use their electronic devices with only one charger and manufacturers to produce only one charger applicable to all kinds of electronic devices. Bro9's technology is a Volca technology that reads the eligible amount of voltage and current of electronic devices with microcurrents and provides the most suitable charging. Volkit technology can convert from AC power to DC power type, which is a lower voltage and current type. In addition, it can receive a low voltage of 5 volt as input and produce it as a higher voltage of 15 volt. Lastly, we have launched the Volt world's first and the only charger that integrated the fixed output power supply adapter with the charger of charging the product's electronic devices. 
Brunei's Volki technology listed above are, in, are registered as international PCB patents in Korea and currently applying for the patents in USA, Germany, China, and Japan. PCB chip on the left side successfully makes its size smaller and it can be used in a wide range of applications. We are aiming to apply this chip to adapters, multi-taps, portable batteries, and electronic devices with our primary product line by 2021. In last February, Brunei participated in CES, and through the exhibition, lots of business cooperation is underway now. Let me introduce you two successful cases of business collaboration. The first case is Canon. Canon already has been recognized that their consumers need to carry two to four batteries to use a Canon camera. However, they can provide a battery charger which can change only one battery with existing technology. For consumer convenience, Canon wants to provide a charger which can simultaneously charge two to four batteries. However, Canon cannot afford the burden of producing new charger along with the camera's product life cycle, but also it needs to get different certification and invest, invest inventories by country. If a Canon charger embedded with the Bro 9's bulky technology is launched in the market, we will be able to use their Canon products permanently without concerning about the camera body life cycle and its battery types. With Canon and Bro 9, we are discussing on tapping Volke technology on Canon camera with the manufacturing process and launching a new model in near future. The second case is Belkin. Belkin produces and distributes the different types of chargers which can charge the electronic devices as shown in the picture. But if you insert the Brunei Volke terminal here, those which can be charged with a Belkin charger can be extended to global and scalable product line. This picture is a, this is a picture sent by Belkin, which is a picture of Best Buy store in America. Belkin suggested to establish Belkin's charger stand with Bronize Volki technology in the middle of electronic store. They also wanted to carry out marketing strategy of letting consumers to know that all electronic devices in Best Buy can be charged with this adapter, multi-tap, portable batteries with embedded bulky PCB chip. We are actively discussing in a positive way and making sample of our collaboration. Brunan is preparing to entering both the B2C and B2B market by distributing our products directly to consumers and collaborating with global camera manufacturers and charger accessory distributors. Our end goal is electronic vehicle charging market in their future. By developing the stability and suitability of Brunei Volki technology based on its core technology, it is gradually expanding into the larger market. Do not waste your time with your dead battery. Just use a Volki product right away. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation. David, do you travel a lot? Yes, I do. Yeah, maybe someday we just get to um, take this Volki product with you, you know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, make sure we... I'll maintain a good relationship with the CEO so yeah. that we can get it for free. <laughs> Maybe next year when we go to CES, we have to take their products, right? Oh, Not yes, our absolutely. bunch of charges, batteries, and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, uh, and it also helps us um, in the sustainability aspect. So definitely looking forward to um, using her um, products in the long run. All right. Do you have anything else to say? Yeah. So um, first of all, thanks so much for your presentation. Um, since early 2020, uh, a lot of global companies actually focus a lot on sustainability, uh, especially reducing CO2. And we as a plug and play have worked very closely with the End Plastic Waste Alliance, which is one of the largest nonprofit organization um, for sustainability. Mm -hmm. So I think that Bro9 is, is definitely following the right market trend. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned so. about like working very closely with um, electronic car manufacturing mm -hmm. such as Tesla. And since I believe that um, 2021 is going to be a market for um, automobile. So um, if you're able to market well, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of uh, scalability opportunity. Yeah, good luck. Thank you.
<laughs> All right, thank you. That was by Bro9. All right, David, it's time for us to meet our fourth company. Right. Now it's time for internet. Absolutely. <laughs> internet, please come on the stage. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome internet. Hi, everyone. I'm CEO of internet, located in Seoul in Korea. Uh, easy service is easy energy service. I will introduce Energy first, which is a professional company in total AMI system management. AMI is an abbreviation of Advanced Metering Infrastructure. AMI is the system to measure energy usage remotely in real time through wire or wireless communication, and to efficiently manage energy usage through two-way information change. It manages energy usage and provides efficient energy utilization service, such as consumption habit, demand analysis, energy reduction, and countermeasure. Based on PLC technology, PLC is an abbreviation of powerline communication. Internet has various work experience uh, and technique and design, developing, establishing, and op operating of multiple type of remote electric meter reading. Powerline communication is a communication technology that enables to transmit data, like voice, text, and image only through Powerline. By spreading COVID-19, non-face-to-face technique is required. Also, Green New Deal policy has announced globally and aims to save energy for net zero. In this situation, NNS EG service is the optimal solution. EG service enables users to manage electricity more efficiently by delivering real-time energy information and to have energy efficiency improved by checking with the app and web. Install EG service application on user's phone and check uh, efficiency, UCAGU, and cost right away. It provides daily, monthly, yearly information so users can make their own consumption plan and save the energy which could be wasted. All data collected on user's phone and check electricity usage and cost right away. It provides daily, monthly, yearly information so users can make their own consumption plan and save the energy which could be wasted. All data collected through PLC is used to create the various services which can be applied to smart city to reduce carbon emissions. Also, installation is very easy and simple. It's very information. It's very simple is installation. Since it's a PLC-based smart metering system, which is used through existing installed electric line and communication line, so no need massive construction work and save the labor cost. Briefly, several strong points of energy EG service are, first, energy efficiency check for easy building floor is available. Second, possible to check via mobile phone and application easily. Third, near-time reading is very important. It's um, energy waste not to uh, unplug and power outlet. But with the easy service, users can easily find and check what electric device is used in efficiently. Fourth, simple and easy installation. As a referring the page of easy service diagram, um, uh, it's no need uh, and big massive construction work, but only installed this U and PLC modem in the building. Let me introduce our partners. 
we have a partnership uh, with major company, uh, public institution, university, and government. Recently, we signed an uh, MOU with Hyundai in engineering and construction with team of digital convergence technology. Also, we maintain a partnership with the uh, electrical engineering department of Seoul National University. About the prospect buyer, as we aim to enter globally energy market, prospect buyers could be placed with related to energy image management in the US, Europe, and uh, worldwide in, in the new southern countries. It could be energy management enterprise or electric power company or building management firm and most of all, any passionate buyers. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. That was by Internet. Now we would like to have a Q&A session. Does anyone have a question for Internet? Um, sure, maybe I can go first. Uh, so, uh, quickly, uh, you know, going back to the point where you're saying that you're a spot, smart metering system. So, uh, I would like to understand how exactly do you help your clients in reducing uh, the energy usage? So, what are the methodologies that you follow for that? 네, 디지털 계량기가 집집마다 설치가 되어 있는데 그 디지털 계량기의 데이터를 어, 바로 본인의 핸드폰이라든지 웹 프로그램을 통해서 확인할 수가 있고 그러므로 계획적인 절감을 할 수가 있습니다. So uh, there are digital meters that are installed in uh, many of these houses and uh, this platform is able to um, e uh, able to gauge um, the electricity um, uses um, through their own application in real time uh, so that they are able to uh, reduce the amount of uh, electrical usage. They can actually plan how, how much they're going to use on their electronics to save that. Is that helpful for your So uh, that's, that that's basically insight and planning on, on the existing um, uh, facility. But then is there any measure taken to, let's say, if the HVAC system is taking up more energy and there's um, uh, you know, a new uh, system required, is there um, more measures taken in that relation to actually... Um, change the energy usage, usage um, uh, uh, I would say, uh, behavior for the facility. 어 지금 기존의 건물들에서는 전기 에너지를 줄이는데 에어컨이라든지 히팅 네. 이게 굉장히 이제 비용이 많이 올라가는 부분인데 그 전기 에너지를 기존 건물에서 바로 온오프 할 수도 있는 어 제품이 시, 시. 있습니다. 아. 네. So each building, they might have a, like different types of electronics that people are using, such as like air conditionings and other electronic stuff, right? But each building can have that, um, they're using by, by using their products, they can control, like they can turn, turn it off or turn it on whenever they mm -hmm. want or they, so they can actually plan the usage of the energy. And, and just in addition to that, uh, they're able to turn it on and off remotely. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's the point. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That was it for internet. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And good luck with your business. Okay. Ooh, David. Yes. Time goes so fast. I know. Um, <laughs> it's been, what, um, fourth startups already. Yes, that's right. Now, now time for us to meet our fifth, um, pro the companies, innovative company. And... Their name, the company name is Medi-Well. Ooh, wondering what kind of business that they're having. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and figure it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Medi-Well. <coughs> Hello, I'm Kevin Choi, the CEO of Medi-Well. And we are offering the rapid air detection for eye, heart, and renal diseases. <coughs> Uh, Medivale was founded in December 2016. Uh, our members are consist of uh, three co-founders, me and medical, Chief Medical Officer Tyler Rim, uh, who is a retina specialist and medical big data expertise. 
and CTO Kenyang Lee, uh, who is expertise in medical deep learning, <coughs> and other seven members in each area of medical device regulatory and product development and sales. Our solution, Dr. Noon, uh, is, offering, is, <coughs> is offering comfort systemic disease screening uh, through the simple eye test. Uh, here, systemic diseases include uh, cardiovascular diseases and cerebral vascular diseases and uh, chronic kidney diseases and ophthalmic diseases. Dr. Nguyen could find these all problems from the just one, uh, one eye imaging. <coughs> uh, we, we are solving the biggest problem in healthcare market, uh, systemic diseases, including cardiovascular, cerebral vascular, and chronic kidney diseases. Uh, cardio and cerebral vascular diseases, uh, CVD, its, mar its market size is uh, 900 billion US dollars worldwide, and chronic kidney disease, CKD, uh, its market size is uh, 140 US dollars. Uh, and its related drug market are also very huge. Uh, Antihypertensive is 26 billion US dollars, and antihyperlipidemia is 24 billion, and CK drug is uh, 16 billion US dollar. <coughs> uh, the problem is the original tests are too complex, expensive, and uncomfortable. So, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, the, sorry, uh, the main problem of these uh, systemic diseases is its low recognition and cure rate. Uh, so uh, there are very complex steps. Uh, for hyperlipidemia case, a uh, patient is led to medical treatment, the drug therapy, after uh, traveling the uh, blood test and cardiac CT, and then uh, led to the uh, drug therapy. Uh, for hypo hypertension or CK drug cases are also very complex. Uh, here, uh, Dr. Yun could find these all systemic diseases through the simple eye test. And then a uh, patient will be led to medical treatment, uh, usually drug therapy. And our uh, diagnostic area includes uh, these all things, uh, the hyperlipidemia and hypertension, uh, chronic kidney disease, and eye, eye disease. And the Dr. Noon's steps are very simple. Uh, first, taking the eye, eye photos, and second, uh, automatic uh, AI analysis, and third, just check the result. Uh, these all steps are done in three minutes, and these are non-invasive uh, procedures. It is all in a system, so don't need uh, additional installation, and it could be taken by nurse. Uh, the right one is the Dr. Nguyen all in a system, and it has easy to take, uh, small footprint, and uh, integrated AI system. Uh, for pro predicting cardio and cerebral vascular diseases area, uh, Dr. Nguyen is accurate CVD risk scoring system as same as the cardiac CT, uh, which is the original golden standard. Uh, Dr. Noon's diagnos diagnostic accuracy is higher than cardiac CT in Asian cohort data set and same level, of, same level in Caucasian cohort data set. CVD item is breakthrough device, breakthrough medical device in Korean FDA and will be approved in CE and and HSA in medical device in soon. And, uh, and in, in the clinical environment, uh, Dr. Nguyen could change the pros process very simple uh, in the original scenario. Uh, uh, very simple. Uh, in the original scenario, uh, there are several steps, including uh, invasive blood test and uh, reservation for CT, visiting the large hospital and waiting for the result. And also, CT needs the, a huge device and the, uh, and the radiologist and radiologic technician, and patients should be exposure to the uh, radiation, radiation risk. Uh, comparing the original procedures, uh, Dr. Nguyen is very simple. Uh, in primary care setting, Dr. Nguyen offers immediate detection of CVD, CVD diseases, and it could be led, it could be led to drug therapy. Uh, if the result is normal, then patient just uh, just need to do regular monitoring in a year. <coughs> Dr. News ophthalmic disease checkup is also simple and accurate. Uh, its accuracy is 90, 95% uh, comparing the 
ophthalmologist, and uh, this is a medical device approved in Korea, and also uh, will be approved in CE and HSA in soon. <coughs> so, uh, our Dr. Noon, uh, our Dr. Noon's cutting edge technology uh, analyzes only a single pair of the retinal imaging and then uh, predict many systemic diseases, including age, gender, creatinine, uh, blood pressure, uh, and hematocritic uh, hematocr uh, score. Uh, all of those uh, factors are close, closely related with cardio or cerebrovascular diseases, renal diseases, and other systemic diseases. <clears throat> Our sophisticated technology and data make it possible. Medivale's uh, uh, precision, precision medicine uh, consists of the matched unique data set and clean label with specialists and validate with a cohort data set. So we, we collected a very uh, compact uh, match data set and clean label with the specialists in uh, Severance or Singapore General Hospital and then validate with uh, uh, the global cohort data set. Uh, we also published our uh, research in the Lancet Digital Health as a cover paper in the October 2020. And we have uh, granted seven original patents and also apply 40, over 40 uh, patents uh, in worldwide. And it is related for the, uh, predicting cardiovascular and the other systemic diseases from the retinal imaging. Thank you. Thank you, Meriwell. Well, I didn't go to medical school, so something about their technique was really hard for me to understand, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. if I don't have to go through all the process of seeing doctors, yes, I definitely need that service. What did you think, David? David? Um, I, I, uh, first of all, thanks for your presentation. Um, I, I think it has amazing technology. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I feel like it could generate another revenue stream, especially in the eye care industry. Mm -hmm. And um, also, uh, by, by just listening to your presentation, I also thought that your technology could be widely used um, in APEC region, especially since there are not many eye doctors out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I could definitely see a lot of business opportunity, especially outside of Korea. All right. Let's hear what our judges think. Does anyone ask a question? Yeah, um, I could start. Um, thank you very much for the pitch. Um, it sounds like this technology has the potential to um, maybe replace existing diagnostic methods. Um, I was wondering how expensive is this um, technology compared to traditional methods? Um, so, uh, how, and I guess one um, question I do have is how long does it take um, to pay for the initial investment um, if your clients are looking to um, integrate this into their um, company? Uh, oh. let, let me check. Let, let me clarify the question. So you, do you mean the timeline for the, the insurance company, insurance procedure uh, for, for the second question? Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming to, um, for your client to use your solution, there is certain initial investment that they need to make um, so I guess in terms of cost analysis, how long do, does it take for them to, um, you know, um, for the cost to, to make sense for them to use this solution? Uh, so f for the first question, uh, there is uh, the, the original procedure is the blood test and the and after then that that led to the uh, cardiac CT. Uh, we are targeting the half uh, price of the cardiac CT. So uh, this is. Uh, much cheaper and much faster than the cardiac CT. And uh, for the qu second question, uh, now we are uh, almost getting the CE and HSA, the Singapore uh, medical device approval, approver. So uh, we could uh, extract it extra out uh, in the ASEAN market and Euro market uh, in, in just now. And uh, for the, our next step is the go to US and the Korean market. Uh, we are targeting an 18 month uh, for the solving the regulatory, and then uh, we could uh, offer our system in the in the primary care setting. Was it enough for your question, Shunpei? Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. If anyone, if not, uh, maybe quick quick yeah. question here. Quick um, question, so please. So just 
Yeah, so um, just elaborating on what Shrimpe was trying to target for the second question, actually. So how exactly are you driving adoption of your uh, procedure compared to the traditional procedure? How are you convincing doctors or clinics or hospitals to actually adopt your process? Could, could you repeat one more time, please? Yeah. Yes. So how, exa how exactly are you planning to drive adoption of your solution compared to traditional solutions? in order to replace them or um, to just accept them as a new solution? Our final goal is uh, that the replace the cardiac CT in the uh, hyperlipidemia uh, procedure. But uh, at the first time, to penetrate the market, uh, we are targeting the, the premium checkup solution uh, in the primary care setting. So like the, the sub-solution sub of just uh, helping, helping for the uh, cardiac CT, like the find the potential cardiac CT subject uh, using our solution. That's our uh, first step to penetrate the market. All right. Thank you so much. That was it. That was by Mehdi Well, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. OK, let's move on. Our next company is Neo Sapiens. Was it correct, David? Because you know I have yes. practiced to pronounce yeah. this name, right? <laughs> yeah, we've been practicing Neo over Sapiens. And over. It's the how we call them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome them on the stage. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tessu Kim, and I'm, I'm the CEO and co founder of Neo Sapiens. Uh, let me introduce my company, Neo Sapiens. Um, Neo Sapiens is a startup that develops AI technology and creates AI actors to innovate the media entertainment industry. As a first step, we've developed emotion expressive speech synthesis technology based on deep learning and launched AI voice actor service. We called it Typecast. Uh, so far, Text content has been the major information source of our daily life, but these days, people don't read text, rather watch video or listen to audio. To make such content, casting human actor is essential because machine couldn't replace the human voice and acting yet. However, it is not easy even for human to act well for media content because it's difficult to speak dialogues conveying appropriate emotion and feeling. So we invented the audio, uh, we invented the word processor for voice production. We called it Typecast, which is an artificial intelligence voice actor service. You can just put your script into our service and then immediately get your voice recording of, for your content. Introducing Typecast, an artificial intelligence voice actor service. Enter the text you wish to vocalize and choose a voice character suitable for your content. You can also select multiple characters and assign them to different sentences. There are a wide range of styles for each character, which can be selected separately for each sentence. You can also control the speed of speech and the length of pause between sentences. By listening to the generated speech, you can make it sound more natural by fixing word spellings with how it's pronounced or by inserting spaces and commas. When you are done, you can also download or share the audio with Typecast. The voices in this video was also created by our service. Uh, <clears throat> the, our core technology is to uh, our core technology is to uh, generate the speech by controlling the emotion and expression. Speaking is not just one-to-one -one mapping to speech from given text. Human can, say, uh, can speak the same sentences in various ways. For example, I can say, hi, everyone, and also I can say, hi, everyone, in a different ways. Our core technology is to generate speech with controllable parameters, such as emotion, intonation, and speaking styles. We launched 
the service a year ago and have more than uh, 160,000 users right now. Our users are mostly creators such as writers, uh, bloggers, YouTubers, and so on. Uh, they are borrowing AI actors to create their online content easier and faster. Most of our users are creating newscasting and video dubbings with our service. Uh, during the last year, we've achieved more than a thousand percent growth, both in the number of users and monthly payments. The number of users uh, was increased by 1,800% and the amount of the monthly payment was increased by 1,200%. Uh, last year, we also built a digital human collaborating with a VR uh, studio and a Korean TV station, NBC. We made a grief striking mom reunited with her deceased daughter in a documentary film uh, titled Meet, uh, Meeting You. It, wa it went viral globally through YouTube and reached 23 million views. In such dig digital human project, we realized that it is inevitable to hire uh, surrogate actors to control visual expression and speak words. Uh, current AI actor service will be extended to AI actor service, which can control facial expression and gestures in addition to voice. Our users can use this kind of service in this year. My name is Camilla. Nice to meet you. What is your name? Yep. Mm. In the near future, anyone can cast AI actors to use them for their content. We develop AI technology and create AI actors to innovate the media entertainment industry. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great presentation. David, yeah. so I met them last year at CES. Oh, you did? And I told them that they're my competitor because I work with my voice. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. What do you think of that presentation? Um, so first of all, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I think the typecast service that you're providing is somehow very unique. And um, I think it has a lot of potential for growth. Um, and it was amazing to hear that you had over 160,000 users in less than a year. Yeah. That's actually a lot of traction. Yeah. Um, and I, I truly believe that the number of YouTubers and bloggers are mm -hmm. doubling up every year. And um, so there could be a really huge market opportunity for you down the line. And just wanted to let you know that uh, Plug and Play is running the Media Accelerator <laughs> program. Okay. Where we are uh, working very closely with um, the number of major mm -hmm. media companies. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure they will be very interested in using your services. Oh, yeah. So um, hopefully we can connect you with the right person so that we could uh, support you with the next startup journey. Yeah, we are looking for the, <laughs> the media companies uh -huh. in globally. <laughs> Glo what yeah. about you, people out there? Um, I have a question. Both Giselle and David have made me curious with their comments. Are you looking to replace voice actors with your technology or offer the service to people who can't afford voice actors? The light, latter one. The, we, are, we are going to support the, who cannot, uh, cannot, cannot hire voice actors or, or actors or animators. The, the, our service can help them. And also, we can, we can provide some value to voice actors. For example, once the voice actor, we, ha we have a pool of voice actors in Korea and also some English speaking voice actors. Mm -hmm. We reward them to, uh, uh, by using their, their voices their voice. to them. Yeah. 
So Edison, that means you worried about me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. Anyone else has question for Neo Sapiens? Sure. Uh, maybe I can go. Uh, so actually, I have previously watched the the mother being reunited with the deceased daughter. The video. So. Um, I am quite excited about the product and uh, just would like to understand what are your lang language capabilities at this point? Uh, currently, we have uh, Korean, <laughs> of course, yeah. and also we have English voices. So in Korean, we have uh, more than 60 you know, uh, voice characters, but in English right now, we have five uh, voice characters, but, but in this year, we are going to increase that to be like uh, more than 50 or something. Mm -hmm. So, how long does it take for you to create one character, and uh, how much is the cost involved? Oh, it depends on the, the how much we, quality we need. But uh, in user, we record the voice actor's uh, voice in in a week or two, and then uh, training their voices within two or three days. Wow! Yeah. All right. Anyone else? I guess that was it then. Maybe I can be their client too, you know, they can copy mm, my voice. Yeah. And next year, maybe Robot Giselle can sit here and, you know, <laughs> conduct this event with you, David. <laughs> All right, thank you we'll so much. Yeah. Good luck you with your much. business. Yeah. Okay, so that was by Neo Sapiens. Time for us to move to our next company. It's called New Ein. You ready, David? Are you getting tired? No, no, no. Um, Absolutely, you should not. I am so excited. <laughs> I'm right. pumped up. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is New Ein. Okay, uh, we are a medical R&D company that adopts electroceutical technology to treat chronic diseases. I'm a co-founder of this company that is responsible for external relations, and we'll give you a general overview of our company when what we do. We started this project in September 2017 with four medical device R&D specialists. We are well experienced in all stages of the uh, medical device R&D and all the way to sales. Our head office is in Seoul Biohub, hosted by the city of Seoul. Uh, we do our own cellular investigation and manufacturing a medical grade facility. Uh, we also fundraised nearly oh, uh, nearly $10 million in investment and winning various awards to conduct uh, cell and animal studies as well as clinical trials. Uh, we electrically mimic our own body signals that various parts communicate with to instruct and uh, instruct our nerves to function better, uh, our tissues to heal faster, and also to inhibit cancer cells to grow. Uh, with that said, we can treat various diseases such as dry eye, glaucoma, migraine, tinnitus, facial palsy, as well as cancer. Um, our most developed product is currently a VR goggle-like de uh, therapy device for eye diseases. Uh, by wearing the device for 30 minutes a day, one can promote nerves to regenerate, function normally again, overcoming dry eye and glaucoma. Uh, we are investigating potential applications in tinnitus, facial palsy, uh, as well as cancer. For next year, uh, actually this year, Happy New Year, uh, we are focusing on clinical development and product launching of eye healthcare device. We are also seeking investment as well. Uh, just to note, our team members are mostly biomedical engineers with PhD and masters and uh, some industry experiences. So uh, I wrap up the uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. All right. <laughs> that was a quick, yeah. but powerful. All right. David, do you have any comments? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I think that the uh, bio is, is certainly the hottest market. And... Um, and um, I believe that the company has a very unique technology, uh, very strong team member, and you guys already have a, a, a successful track record in terms mm -hmm. of the investment. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually uh, very excited to see more of your girls um, um, in the, in the down, um, down in the line. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. All right. 
Does anyone questions? Um, maybe I can go for it. Uh, so uh, very curious to understand, like for the eyewear device, um, how long does a patient have to um, use it to actually see the effects? Uh, uh, like, is there a specified duration for that? Um, it depends on the uh, type of um, uh, disease you are um, uh, dealing with. So for instance, a uh, very simple, uh, but uh, quite serious, uh, dry eye. Um, by wearing the device uh, uh, once for 30 minutes, uh, the patient would experience uh, relief in uh, the sensation of dryness, as well as a um, bit of a um, uh, comfort and better vision. Um, but uh, that uh, effect uh, lasts for about three days. Uh, but this also varies among patients, and it is recommended for a um, acute application of uh, about a two weeks, and that goes uh, about the same for glaucoma as well. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, I have a question. I didn't quite catch the details, but when the patients are wearing the, the eyewear, what specifically is going on? Um, so the device, um, uh, when you turn it on, it uh, detects that the device is worn properly. Uh, and then um, uh, the device delivers a um, specific uh, electric signal to the uh, nerves to instruct the, um, uh, the eyes to, for instance, um, if the eyes are dry, then um, uh, it would instruct the uh, eyes to release uh, some tears. And um, for... Um, it also um, instructs the uh, damaged uh, tissues to regenerate uh, faster. Uh, it's a very similar mechanism to uh, using um, eye drop or um, ointment for uh, tis tissue damage. But we use, uh, instead of the uh, chemical approach, we use a uh, physical uh, uh, modality, such as uh, electricity. Mm. Got it. Um, as a follow-up question, then, is the strength of your technology the hardware itself or the software that controls the hardware? Uh, both. Uh, because um, uh, in order to uh, apply um, uh, the treatment in the best way possible, we have to design the uh, device uh, as it is. Then the, um, the software aspect, we have to, because it's a, um, we are making clinical claim. Uh, we have to conduct clinical trials um, with uh, various uh, protocols to evaluate the uh, safety and the efficiency and the efficacy, yeah. Okay, that was it by Nuain. Thank you. That was you. it? Yeah, that was uh, it. <laughs> okay, that was quick. Good job. All right, thank you. All right, good luck. Whew, David. Yes. We just have seen all the presentation by our seven innovative companies. Right, absolutely. What do you think? <laughs> um, I think um, it was such an amazing to see um, the number of founder, mm -hmm. uh, especially they are, um, I, I, it's, it was very good to see their passion and the desire that they wanted to get into the global market. Uh -huh, yeah. And as a plug and play, I, I realized that what we could do the best for them mm -hmm. is to support them to make sure that they um, tap into the global market through our plug and play platform. Yeah, so true. I'm, And I hope that you work hard to find that solutions, okay? And our team <laughs> make sure. who's participating as the judges will <laughs> yeah, that's work right. so hard to support them. That's right. I want to um, hear from you all too. Who's one, who wanna go first? We would like to hear from you, our judges. Maybe Edison, will you go first? Absolutely. I thought this was an incredible bunch of technologies we saw today tackling all kinds of problems. I know I would be first in line to be their customer for a lot of these solutions. Um, and I'm excited to see it sounds like some of them are already making some strides to the US. And I'm excited to see them, you know, penetrate this market and would, we're happy to help in any way we can over at Plug and Play. Thank you. And I hope that you enjoy being here with us. <laughs> all right, Shunpei. 
Yeah, um, wonderful pitches by everyone. Um, very happy to see such diverse group of founders and um, different businesses. Um, and since I am located in Tokyo, I, I will be very happy to discuss with them about their uh, market entry into the um, APAC region um, countries. Okay. LeBron? All right. Yeah, uh, so I think uh, very excited to see a um, very diverse collection of startups. And uh, I think uh, in the medical uh, front, uh, we have a few partners here um, in Southeast Asia and would be very um, you know, uh, eager to uh, see if we can collaborate. And again, uh, for the rest of the startups as well, I think there's quite a bit of uh, synergy here uh, for the Southeast Asian market. So provided someone wants to expand to Southeast Asia, I'm happy to lend a hand and uh, looking forward to, you know, uh, successful collaborations in the future. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, for your thoughts on today's presentation with this CES Live Seoul. Seoul Pitch Day has come to an end. And thanks for being here with us today. David, you are with me all the session. Right, absolutely. <laughs> And I'm sure you have a lot to say to our viewers, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, first of all, thank you so much for um, inviting us to this amazing session. I was very impressed by the um, passion and the desire that the CEO has shown us regarding their global market expansion. Um, and we as a plug and play would love to support uh, the startup's journey through our um, international offices. So thank you so much all for joining. I was really happy to be with you because I was not alone. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and I was also very impressed by all the companies who shared their products and services today. Um, even though they couldn't physically be at CES 2021 Seoul exhibit this year, I'll be cheering them on their success from afar. And hopefully we get to see everyone with you, David, in Las Vegas next year. Yes, uh, very, look, <laughs> very much looking forward to it. All right, this is it for Live CES, all pitch day one. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.